So this podcast is about the chemical equilibrium constant. Now the uh, equilibrium constant is a quotient of the products over the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. So if you look at this particular equation, notice the double-headed arrow, which indicates that it is truly at equilibrium. And then also notice that the K expression has the C and the D, which are the two products, raised to the power of their coefficients L and M. And then that's over uh, A and B, which are the reactants, raised to the power of their coefficients. Notice brackets for C, D, A, and B, which means all of those values are in molarity, moles per liter. Now, when you calculate a K, the value of the K tells you whether the reaction goes really far forward in, uh, really far in the forward direction, that would be a large K, or really far in the reverse direction, that would be a small K. Because keep in mind that um, equilibrium reactions go both ways. They produce products and then they also produce reactants. The degree to which they go forward is really what the K is. And the K is constant for a particular reaction at a constant temperature. Now, again, large value for K means that reaction's going really, really, really far forward. Um, so most of the reactant then gets converted to products as you see here in the diagram, reactants being red and products being blue. Of course, then the opposite is true if it is a reactant favored equilibrium. You then have um, small value for K. That means the reactant direction is favored. So you have um, a lot of reactants that have not reacted. You've produced very little product. So again, here in the diagram, you see a large amount of reactants still present and a very small amount of product has actually been made. Now when you write an expression, an equilibrium expression, for a particular reaction as noted in the previous uh, slides, you raise the products to the power of their coefficients and that goes over the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. So notice here in this reaction I have taken NO and squared it because of the 2 in front of the NO. I've taken the O2 to the first power. And then on the bottom, notice there that NO2 has been raised to the second power. So it's always products over reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. Now, we're going to work with, in equilibrium, something called the reaction quotient. Now the reaction quotient is pretty much what I just described the equilibrium constant is. It's the products over the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. However, when the system is not at equilibrium, we simply call it Q, or reaction quotient. When the reaction is at equilibrium, we call the value that we've calculated K. In the next slide here, we're going to take a look at how to compare the reaction quotient to the uh, equilibrium constant. And you will, in some of your problems, you will actually take molarities and you will plug them into this reaction quotient and then try to determine uh, whether the system is at equilibrium by taking a look at the actual value of the equilibrium constant. So here are the three situations. If the reaction quotient is equal to the equilibrium constant, then the system is simply at equilibrium. If the reaction quotient is greater than K, then that means that reaction has to shift to the left to achieve equilibrium. That means there are more products sitting around than there should be at equilibrium. So those products have to react to become reactants. Um, and so you get a shift to the left in the reaction. Then the opposite situation, if the Q is less than K, that means you don't have enough products there to truly have an equilibrium system. So the system will shift to the right and it'll make more products, which will then increase the Q um, up to the value of K. So these are basically the three situations um, in determining shifts within an equilibrium system based on the value of the reaction quotient compared to the equilibrium constant.